Coming up, I'll reveal the top 10 companies to work for in the United States. And I'm going to teach you how to define and find your passion. We'll take your calls and your chat questions, and it all starts now. I am coming to you live from our Ramsey Solutions studios in Nashville, and you are joining a conversation about who you are, what you were created to do, where you want to do it, and then how to get there. It is about combining your income with your impact. See, we all long to make a difference in the world. That's one thing that unifies us all, no matter where we're from or what we believe. We all want to make a difference. It's why we lay awake at night sometimes and say, why am I here? What should I do with my life? These are the big questions that we all wrestle with. Why? Because we were created to contribute. You were created to fill a unique role in your relationships and in your work. And we focus on the work aspect here on the Ken Coleman Show. You were created to fill a unique role in your work. You are needed. You must do it. You have a duty to show up and be the best version of you because, frankly, somebody out there needs you. So finding our why at work, our purpose in our work is about others. And that's what we're committed to here. So if you are in the, uh, in the boat of, well, I, I have no idea what I want to do, that's okay. We can help you figure it out. If you know what you want to do, but you don't know how to get there, we can help you with that too. And if you know what you want to do, and you know how to get there, but you're just scared and you're stuck, we can help you with that. 844-747-2577 is the number. 844-747-2577. You can also submit your questions via the chat room next to the video there as you're watching. And then, of course, you can email the show, ask at kencoleman.com. If you've got some momentum in your life and in your work, you're making progress and you want to share it with the show, we like to read those every Monday. So you can email us, ask at kencoleman.com. And finally... Uh, the website is KenColeman.com for a lot of free and then uh, amazing paid resources in our store. And uh, you need to follow me on Instagram. A lot of good stuff coming at you there at Ken Coleman. Today, I'm sharing with you the latest data from Glassdoor. They released their annual 100 best places to work in 2021. Just to give you the background on the study, they uh, analyzed 70 million employee reviews of more than 1.3 million companies. That's a substantive study. And um, organizations with at least 1,000 employees were considered for this ranking. So here we go. Uh, A couple more details. Uh, Here are the themes that Glassdoor analyzed based on the employees' comments. Okay? Okay. Flexible working environments, communication, work-life balance, transparent senior leadership, good health benefits, company culture, smart and collaborative colleagues, clear company direction, opportunity for career advancement, and opportunity to do impactful work. So good, nothing there, nothing I disagree with there. That's what people care about. All right, we'll just roll this through this real quick. Uh, This is just good information. Bain and Company uh, out of Boston, Massachusetts, number one. Uh, They've been up there for a while on this list. Uh, They are a management consulting company. NVIDIA, Santa Clara, California, technology and gaming. In-N-Out Burger. Oh, that's always fun to see, Joe, because it's one of my favorite burgers on the planet as well. Irvine, California is their headquarters. Obviously, they're in fast food. HubSpot, Cambridge, Massachusetts. They're in the technology and software space. McKinsey & Company, New York, New York, management consulting company. Google, Mountain View, California. We know what that's about. Delta Airlines, Atlanta, Georgia. By the way, I I knew, I I mean, I would call us professional acquaintances, Ed Bastian, who's the current CEO. Good man. We went to the same church together. He endorsed my first book, by the way. Good, good man. Uh, Lululemon. Number eight, Vancouver, Canada. They're in the apparel business. By the way, uh, just a little note to you dudes out there. So Lululemon came on the scene primarily for women um, and uh, really great stuff. So I buy it for Stacy. She loves it. And then I had a couple buddies tell me that they're making guys pants. So I went in there and uh, guys, 
the Lululemon guy stuff is extremely comfortable and very nice as well. Just going to throw that out there. So, you know, uh, the problem with dudes, and I'm just going to call this out. Nobody wants to walk around going, hey, I'm wearing my Lululemons. There's your branding issue. You know, I think they'd sell more men's stuff because it is high quality and it's very comfortable. But I myself don't, you know, other than acknowledging it here on the show, I don't walk around going, hey, I'm wearing my Lulus today. No dude wants to say that. They need to come up with like a men's name line, you know, for their stuff. I just think that would be better. But it's really good stuff. It's quality. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. I'm wearing my Larry Lemons today. It's a little weird, but I'll go with it. Thank you, Joe. Uh, number nine, Microsoft. Uh, Redmond, Washington. And finally, the number 10, uh, best place to work, according to this survey by Glassdoor. HEB, supermarket chain, uh, headquartered in San Antonio, Texas. So um, there you go. Happy hunting if you're looking for work at, at that list. And by the way, you can go to Glassdoor and, and I pr presumably see the uh, top 100. Uh, but I, I like that. I, I share those results because they're, this survey is measuring the right things from people that work there. That's what you're looking for, by the way. You know, when you, when you are doing research on applying at a company, uh, this list of things here, you know, what, what kind of communication, corporate communication? Is it clear? Is it consistent? You know, flexible working environments, transparent senior leadership, good health benefits, mission-driven company culture, smart and collaborative colleagues, clear company direction, opportunity for career advancement, and opportunity to do impactful work. You know, that's a really good list. You can add more to that. But again, that's, that's what you're looking for when you measure a company. Hey, do I want to work there? 844-747-2577 is the number. Let's start it off today with Tyler in Raleigh, North Carolina. Tyler, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken. Good talking to you. How are you today? I'm living the dream, Tyler. What's going on? Hey, um, so I'm at a, a bit of a crossroads here. I, uh, so I work in uh, the commercial shipping world. I, I actually work on an iron ore carrier on the Great Lakes. And it's what all of my training is in. It's a good paying job, and I enjoy it. However, it keeps me away from home for a month to sometimes multiple months at a time. And I've got a side hustle as a wood shop, and I really, really love it. And the goal is to uh, jump into that full time once we get our house paid off. We're in baby step six right now. Wow. We've still got, like, we still got... Uh, if we push it, we could probably get the house paid off within four years. Um, and so the goal was once we get the house paid off and we're in baby step seven, I could just jump and have no worries. But we also just, uh, we'd welcomed our first baby girl into the family back in September Yeah. and being away from home for weeks or months at a time with a little one at home. Yeah. It's hard on my wife and it's hard on me. And yeah, I don't want to miss these formative years yeah. of my daughter's life yeah. being gone just for a paycheck, you know? Yeah. What's your and paycheck? So, What's your paycheck right now? What do you, what do you um, make? I'm, I'm in the low to mid six figures. Uh, this year, this year was a little bit weird because of um, okay. cargo. Be cargo, more specific. Made, what do you mean? Low? I, I, what do you mean? Uh, this year I cleared 108 last year. I cleared about 125. Okay. So let's just call it a, let's call it 110, 115 range. That's kind of an average. Sure. Okay. Sure. And you're debt free and you're the only debt you have is your home. Okay? Correct. And you guys are crushing it. You got the emergency fund. You've walked out Dave Ramsey's baby steps. So you, you, you're in great shape. So how much money yeah. are you making? If any at all on the wood shop? So last year, um, just doing it in you know my time whenever I'm at home, I I cleared somewhere between twenty and twenty five. Okay. Um, which um, what we've done with my wood shop since I've first started it was all of it has stayed separate. Um, I don't buy any tools or materials out of my day job paycheck, and I now have a complete wood shop that didn't cost me anything out of my day job. Yeah, you funded it out so, of your own dream. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So, so I I think we did it smart that way. Yeah. But okay. So so um, 
What do you want to make? Jump. What would make? I know, but what would be the number <laughs> where you would go based on the fact that we're debt free? We've got a very strong emergency fund, um, and we we know how to budget and we live on less than we make. What's the number that the wood shop would need to throw off, paying you, to where you would feel mm-hmm. comfortable stepping away from the one ten, one fifteen, day job? <laughs> You're saying before um, the house is paid off, like tomorrow? No, no, no because or, you're not going to last in this day job for four more years. You know it. There's no way yeah. you're going to make it. It's your heart, your heart's telling you to get out now. I'm trying to walk you through this. Just answer my question. Forget, forget to I, pay the house off, dude, because you can't wait four years. What do you right. need to make? What would the wood shop need to be able to pay you for you to step into it, was, it today? If if I could clear seventy, I I know for a fact that we could still be making progress towards the house and all of our other. Okay, goals. so that's the number. So in your head, yep. you circle a big giant seventy. All right, mm-hmm. seventy thousand. And so you said you made twenty last year, right? Right. Okay. What? And I don't want you to think too much. You're you're too busy thinking. I got you, man. I've, I'm taking you where you want to go. <laughs> okay. What needs to be true for you to double? Your income from the wood shop to make forty in twenty twenty one. What would need to be true for you to make forty as opposed to twenty? Um, uh, honestly, a lot of it is um, getting my products out there more, which I have been doing. I have been growing, but um, okay. it's also you know whenever I'm whenever I'm on the boat, I can only I you know projects come to us stand still whenever i can't be okay here, there's so. your answer so that's the second part of your answer first part of the answer is i need right. to get my products out there more and the only way i'm going to be able to do that is if i'm not on the boat which means i gotta have a different day job <laughs> right okay so um, what's the quickest path is why you called me when do right. i jump to the dream job well number one you move to the dream job when you are able to pay yourself 70 grand okay okay so there's a couple ways to do that. Okay. You could, and don't freak out now. I'm not telling you to stop paying your house off. Okay. But okay. as you know, at Ramsey Solutions, we we believe debt free is with you can still have the house payment. We want you to pay it off. That's why it's baby step six. Right. But the fact of the matter is, you're in great shape. You could slow down or pause one way to get there. I'm gonna give you the ways to get there, is you begin to save up money Mm -hmm. okay beyond everything else you're doing okay your emergency Mm -hmm. fund is set you save up money for the first six months of going out on your own so you save up 35 and then you hope to make 35 that's one way of doing it there's some risk there okay sure but that's one way to do it okay and then you you know you you bet on yourself you go okay i'm here and by the way saving up to 35 may involve you staying in the current job okay or right. or you get another job that get off the boat and it's another day job but you're not traveling and so you're making about 100 you know to 110 can you get it can you replace your income uh in raleigh north carolina doing similar mm. work that you do on a boat that's what you have to answer. Not really. <laughs> I, I have looked into that, and not really. Uh, the shipping industry, they, they call it the golden handcuffs because it pays very well, but you kind of get stuck in it. Okay, can you make – can you find <laughs> – hold, hold on a second. Can you make okay. it – you're giving me all the reasons why this can't happen. Can you – I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm kind of challenging you a little bit. Okay. So just listen. Can you get a job paying, making 70 to 75 in Raleigh, North Carolina? Oh, yeah. Well, wait a second. You told me a second ago that if you paid yourself 70 from the wood shop, that mm-hmm. you could still make progress on your house and live comfortably. Correct. So I think the step is let's go get a 70, 75, $80,000 job. If you can get more, get it. But you get that, that gets you off the boat. That solves two problems, doesn't it? Okay. It solves problem number one, which is your heart being away from baby girl and mama, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. And it helps the household be calmer and just, just better. And then problem number two is it gives you more time to work on the wood shop because you're not on the boat yeah. all the time. Right. That's the path to me. I think that's the best path. Now, you can stay on the boat and be a big boy, and it's going to hurt your heart, but you can do it. 
And so yeah. you can stay in that position a little bit longer to save up the money uh, to be able to step into your into your gig. But I think the easiest thing for you is probably to get the 70 to 75, 80, something like that job in Raleigh. It's just a day job that allows you to keep right. keep the budget going, still make progress on your house. And now you've got more time on the wood shop. And so you told me that that's what it would take. So if you doubled your income at the wood shop, now you now you got a combined income because you could pay yourself a little bit. You could pay yourself fifteen or twenty, right? And still put money away in the wood shop, right? So it's my job to show you the ways to get there. Have I showed you? Do you see the two ways to get there? Yeah, I I do. Um, I I will say that my natural inclination would be to stay on the boat until I can just walk out of it completely. Well, then um, do that. But I, uh, but, but as I told you, my, you know, my, my heart's at home with my family. Okay. So I gave you another option. You did. And yet, um, and yet you're like, yeah, I mean, it's like you want another option. There is not another option. <laughs> you're right. So what do you want to do? It's your call. Um, I gave you two options. You I don't think, have to tell me. I want you to right. think about it. Yeah. My, I'm, I'm not trying to put you on the thought. spot. Yeah, that's my point. <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot here and you just blurt something out because in this situation, you don't have to. You got options. Right. Uh, there, might be right. A, there might be a wrinkle. Maybe you combine elements of both options and create a third option. I don't know. Um, yeah. But you and your wife need to sit down and talk through those two options. But you got this, man. You'll get there. You'll get there. And it's just a ma- It's This is a... This is a math problem that you just have to figure out what's the best solution to my math problem. And then we look at which of those two solutions, which I think we created, I created two solutions, your math problem, but which one is best for our hearts, my wife and I. That one to me becomes the winner. So the math works both ways. But follow your heart. That's what I always come back to. There's just no confusion for me. We look at our options, and we go, what's my heart telling me? And, you know, the head's involved with the heart. The head does the logical decision, so it's not a stupid, risky, crazy decision. And that's how we arrive at our options, and we go, what's my heart telling me? It works, folks, every time. 844-747-2577 is the number. Let's go to Fremont, New Hampshire. Caitlin is on the line. Caitlin, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. How can I help, Caitlin? Well, so I've been a nurse for about 14 years, just about. um, And I just feel like nursing isn't what it used to be. I'm really burnt out, overwhelmed, and and really stressed. Um, I just feel like it's too much for me to handle. And, and, you know, I really feel like I need to do something else, um, you know, non-nursing. And I just really need some help trying to figure out what that next thing is. Okay. Was there a time where you weren't overwhelmed in nursing and as a result you really did enjoy the work? A long time ago. Okay. <laughs> well, that's what I want to go to. Tell me what you love most about nursing, the work itself, the task or several tasks or functions or roles that you played. Well, I enjoyed working with elderly, um, but I didn't like the environment that I was in. Okay, but um, I didn't ask you that. We'll get to that. That's what you're dealing with. You've got a lot of environmental problems right now. But what I'm trying mm-hmm. to remind you of and inform me of is the work that you love to do. You know I talk about talent, passion, mission. What you do best is is talent, hard skills, soft skills, mm-hmm. passion. I define passion. I'm going to teach a little bit on this later in the program as work that you love to do. Okay? You love the work, the task, the, the role that you're playing. And then mission, okay, you gave us a clue there of the elderly. You, you, you love who are the people you want to help, the problem you want to solve, the solution you want to provide to that problem. Mm-hmm. So when I say work you love, what did you love about nursing? Um, I mean, the actual aspect of caring for people, taking care of people. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. You're a caregiver. You love the work of caregiving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. Anything else? That's true. Um, I mean, I like educating and supporting them and, um, you know, Mm -hmm. teaching them about, you know, their disease and, you know, medications, whatnot. Good. Good. Um, we can call it, we'll, we'll slap an ING on there and call it educating, caregiving and educating people on their health. It's good. Um, so 
when did it change? And I don't need to know the exact timeline. I'm looking more for what, what, what in the environment, what circumstances over time, or maybe even instantly changed it from, I really love this work to, oh gosh, I don't want to do this anymore. What changed? Um, the last few years, just feeling like it's kind of always the same thing everywhere you go, the short staffing, yep. there's always going to be politics in the company. There's mm-hmm. always that defending your license and, you know, you don't always do what you feel is right because, you know, sometimes it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's going to be looked down upon even if it's the right thing. So I just, I don't know. I just so really, really this, feel like. So the systemic issues within healthcare. Yeah, I just my heart's just not in it. Okay. No, I get that. But what I'm trying to figure out is the why. You know, I'm trying to figure yeah. out are you doing the right thing in the wrong place? And what I mean by that, it's not necessarily the 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 hospital or the the um, health organization that you're in now, but is it is it the industry itself? It's a slight tweak. You know. Yep. Um who are the people you most want to help? What challenges do they have and what solutions do you get excited about giving them? Obviously, caregiving and educating really is the answer there. So I, mean, mm-hmm. I can plug that in for you. I mean, that's really that's really the solutions you want to provide. Some type of, of, of uh, active help in the form of caregiving, guiding, educating. So who are the people you most want to help? Forget about the environment right now. Who are the people you most want to uh, give care and educate and inform? for their benefit? Um, well, I, I like the elderly people the best. Yeah. Um, Why is that? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I don't know. They just, they seem the most, I don't know, helpless, I guess. Or, yeah. I mean, yeah, Have you always really, been really that? Need... Do you remember back in your childhood being a little girl or an adolescent where you just realized, if you, or maybe you didn't realize at the time, but if you look back, as I'm taking you on this journey back now, you've always mm-hmm. been a very empathetic and compassionate person. Empathy is understanding the plight of someone else. You put yourself in their shoes and then compassion is acting on it. Oh yeah. I've always been that type. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if it's working with the elderly, where are some places that you can care give and instruct and guide them on their health that are not in the traditional medical or healthcare arenas? like an adult day center or something like that. Yep. There you go. This is where you have to look right now. Where are those people and how can I help them? Because there's this institutional piece to elderly care as well, you know, but if it is in that day centers and you're, you're kind of working with them and maybe it's not necessarily always their health could be the emotional side of things. I don't know. You have to figure that out. But if Mm -hmm. you look at Fremont, New Hampshire, and you go, who's caring for the elderly in my area? That's where we start. This isn't a needle in a haystack exercise. It's like, who's who's giving care to the elderly? Okay, so we're going to look at actual facilities. Um, and then we might look at, are there government services? Are there in-home? So not even a facility, but it's, um, you know, companies that provide assistance in home and the healthcare or Medicare or Medicaid pays for it. You just got to do your research Mm -hmm. because what's going on here is not the act of being a nurse that you can't stand or that you've lost the juice for. As I like to say, you've lost your passion. You don't love it anymore. Your heart's not in it. That just means you have no juice. There's no passion for that particular place because of the environment. Right. So we can say confidently Caitlin, that you haven't lost your passion. It's that you're 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 not you you you've been you you you're you're experiencing buildup on the heart. Mm-hmm. You said the word burnout. I'm overwhelmed with burnout. Well, there's five causes of what I call buildup on the heart. Have you heard me share this before, Caitlin? I don't think I've heard this. No. Okay, good. I'm gonna set you free. You burnout <laughs> burnout is not a um, source of something. Burnout is not. Um, the problem, burnout is the symptom. You're a healthcare professional, mm-hmm. okay? If I go in for a sore knee, the soreness is not the problem. There's something causing the soreness, true or false? True. Okay, so something's causing you to feel burned out. Feeling burned out is real, I get it. But there's five causes of what I call buildup on the heart. So Caitlin, if you put your hand 
on your chest right now, you and you're quiet and you're still, you can feel your heart beating. But if I yeah. had you put on blanket after blanket after blanket, probably five, six, seven, eight blankets, or maybe heavy coats, you could put your hand in the same spot on your chest where you felt your heart, and would you feel it? No. Why? Well, you're covering it up. We're covering it up. And so these are the five <laughs> causes of buildup on the heart that make you feel burned out. But because you're talking to me on the phone right now, I know you're not burned out. Your flame has not been extinguished. Here are the five causes. No passion for the work. That's not you. That's what you think. But you actually love caring for people. We've established that. Number two cause of buildup is toxic work environment. Ding, 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 ding. Right? Yeah. Number three cause of buildup is overwhelmed. That's the first word you used on the call. You're overwhelmed. (laughs) You feel like you're drinking from a fire hydrant. You feel like you're drowning Mm -hmm. as soon as you pull into the parking lot. Am I right, Caitlin? Yeah, you're right. Number four cause of build up on the heart is being underappreciated. You don't feel like the company sees you and they don't recognize your work and value. You just feel underappreciated. I don't know if that's happening to you or not. Might be a little bit. Uh, but then the fifth cause of build up on the heart is being bored. There's no challenge. We as human beings need need this, 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 we need progress. We need to be challenged. When we master something, we need another challenge or else we're just sitting around, you know, twiddling our thumbs. I don't think that's you. You're not bored. So I think you've got, yeah. So I really think it's the, the overwhelmed and it's the toxicity. And so we look at that and we go, oh, I need to go to a healthy place. And I think you feel like there are no healthy healthcare organizations. I'm not going to debate you on that. Maybe that's true. You, you would know better than me. But my point is, I do believe there's a place where um, some of the systemic problems that you've encountered aren't as bad or they don't exist in mass. And I think you got to find that. But as far as being a nurse and take the title of nurse away, it's the work of being a nurse that you love. I don't think you've lost that. Would you agree now that I've walked you through this? Um, I agree. Yeah. There we go. So now it's just, hey, we got to look for a different place where I can truly right. do the work that I was created to do. And and we've gotten you, you're clear on that. That's the great news. Now we just got to go looking for it. 844-747-2577 is the number. Quick break. When we come back, we'll get to your chat room questions. And I'm going to help you figure out how to define and find your passion. That's coming up. We were drawn to Christian Healthcare Ministries because we both had young families and we wanted to have more children. And we had also just started a real estate company and needed to find healthcare coverage that would meet our needs. We were attracted to CHM because of its low monthly costs and the ability to negotiate medical costs down. Established in 1981 and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, CHM is here to meet the needs of your growing family or small business. Check us out at chministries.org. We absolutely believe in it. Welcome back. The Ken Coleman Show continues to bring you clarity so that you can confidently step out on the path to meaningful work, to do work that you really, really love. It just, you love it, and it's making a difference in the marketplace that matters deeply to you because you see the results of that work. And folks, that is available. And and on this journey to meaningful work, you're going to get into that dream job, and then you're going to go a step beyond that and just work for true impact. So we're helping you combine those two, income and impact. Um, A lot of people are in jobs that provides good income. And those jobs are creating impact. The, the, The disengagement comes when the impact that you're making doesn't fire your soul. You're just like, eh, eh. You know, the, the research from data, uh, excuse me, from Gallup, one of the, you know, the world's leading research firms, uh, continues year after year to show that about two thirds of the world uh, are, are, are just completely disengaged in their work. They're there, but it's just a job. They're doing the bare minimum to keep getting paid. And when, when that's your engagement with work and you do that every Monday, 
and you add up 90,000 hours doing that kind of work where you're just disengaged, you may not hate it, but you don't love it. See, I don't want to focus on the negativity. It's not that you hate your job. A lot of you don't hate your job. That's what the data shows. But you don't love the work. You're not fired up about it. And that begins to wear on you. So that's what we talk about here on the Ken Coleman Show. Let's go. Life's too short to live for the weekend. 844-747-2577. Let's go uh, to the chat room. Bear Paw Piper. Great username. That wins today. Nobody's going to be better than Bear Paw Piper. That's fun. Uh, Ken, I'm currently making $15 an hour, uh, but the job may end and uh, I might have to get unemployment. The temp agency wants me for a $30 an hour, but won't say how long or how short. Should I take? Should I stay at my job or take the temp? They need an answer within the hour. Oh, gosh. All right. You're making $15 an hour, but that job may end. And now you've got a temp agency offering you a $30 an hour job, but won't say how long or how short. Uh, this is a real conundrum here. Um, depends to me on your financial situation and your confidence in your ability to get another job. Let's say you take the temp agency offer, you're going to double your income. That's great. Presumably that would be, you know, for at least a month. So you got to ask yourself the question, what's the timeline by which I'm not comfortable taking the bump in pay? Okay, because it's like if, if it ended in a month, where would that put me? How would I feel? If it ended in three months, where would that put me? How would I feel? Six months, nine months, a year. I think that's an interesting exercise to just see where you are at. What's your taste for risk there? Uh, because if we look at your current job, you're saying it may end. You're not saying it's going to end. It may end. So it feels like the current job is a bit more stable, but I don't know enough. I don't, I don't have you on the phone. So based on that, I think you just have to walk through what would you do if the, is there any evidence that says that your current $15 job might end in the next month, three months, six months, same kind of exercise. What do we know? What evidence do we have to truly make a decision? You know, because part of me goes, well, let's call the temp agency back again and go, I know you can't tell me how long it's going to be, but can you give me some background here? How long do more, more people say? I think the Tim Agents can answer some more questions. I'd like to dig a little bit more. That's what I would do there. But hey, if you feel like, you know, that you can take that $30 an hour job and that experience and that pay and turn it into another one because you've stepped up a notch, I'd take that one. Bet on yourself. Uh, let's see here. Home with Kelly. I run a membership program through Instagram with a thousand members. I'm in the process of transitioning away from Instagram. and want to shut it down and focus on my real world career. How do I let my members know? Really simple, clearly, and gratefully. Hey, thanks for all of you following me and engaging on this platform. I've really enjoyed it. I'm humbled that you follow me and that you've enjoyed the content. Uh, but it's time for a new chapter. And so I'm going to be shutting this down. Thank you. I've enjoyed this. Clearly, graciously, gratefully, kindly. That's it. There's your recipe. There's your soup. And that's how you do it. And they'll they'll be excited for you. Uh, and if they're not, who cares? You're not going to engage with them anymore anyway on Instagram. So there you go. All right. Um, switch gears here. Um, just a reset for people that are new to the program because we have people coming in and out all the time every day. The seven stages to meaningful work. It's like a climb. So that, that's why we call them stages. They work together. Obviously, we, 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 we walk in order. Stage one is get clear. That's where you figure out your sweet spot, your unique role in this world through your work. Okay? That's, and so how do we do that? Well, we get clear on three major gifts that we all have. Talent. This is what we do best. Think hard skills, soft skills. And again, we're only talking about what you do best. Not your average skills or talents. Okay, but the, the ones above average and the excellence. Because I can turn above average into excellence. And excellence can be greatness. Okay? Soft skills, hard skills. What I do best. Those, that's the talent that you have. And th that's a tool or those are tools. To then do work you love. Passion. 
I love the work. All right, I'm going to explain this in a second. And then all work creates results. So I use what I do best, talent, to do work I love, passion, to produce results in the world that matter deeply to me. That's my mission. Okay? Now, that's the construct. That's the methodology. That's how you get clear. That's how you figure out this unique role that you were created to fill. And when you figure out talent, passion, mission, you look in the marketplace to go, oh, what are all the different jobs, career paths that would allow me to do this? And there is a dream job, multiple dream jobs, multiple career paths, and multiple jobs in the sweet spot as a result. So it's not just one. All right. So I want to. Just park here. Now that I've explained the construct again to those of you that are new, let's look at passion. Because, you know, passion's got a root word and I've nerded out and, and taught on that before. I'm not going to teach on that today. You can go do, do the research yourself. And then passion is used all over the place. People say, chase your passion, find your passion. Some people go, don't chase your passion. Blah, 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 blah. There's all these opinions. Here's the deal. I define passion as work you love to do. Okay, that's the context of the show. And so that's what I say. Okay, you love the work. And all of us have tasks or functions or roles, if you will, that we love to do or fill. We, do, we just do. We love it. Let me explain. High emotion, high devotion would define passion. Let's talk about high emotion. When I think about giving a talk, when I think about doing my show, when I think about doing a media hit on television or radio or a podcast, when I think about developing an assessment or writing a book or creating a, a free resource like the resume guide, I, when I just think about doing that work, I get excited. When I actually engage in the work, I, I feel so much juice. I love it. I don't want to stop doing the work. I love the work itself, the actual content creation. I love it. The actual delivery of helpful content, or in this case, when I'm on the Ken Coleman show, I am playing the role of coach, counselor, and cheerleader all in one phone call. I love doing that. The world could be falling apart, and if Joe sits me in this chair and turns this microphone on and puts a caller on the other line or I've got something I want to share, everything else disappears. So I have high emotion. I love it. When I think about it, I get excited. And when I'm in the middle of it, I'm just loving it. High devotion. What's that mean? It means I'm willing to do other hard work. I'm willing to do other things that I don't love to get better at this and to keep doing this. And I don't want to stop doing it. it. It consumes my mind. So that's high devotion. Time, the amount of time I put into it, the amount of time I read, the amount of time I think, the amount of time I've studied, the amount of time I, I develop, the amount of time I show up and do the calls or whatever it is. High emotion, high devotion. When I think about it, I get the juice. When I'm in the middle of it, I experience the juice. And I don't want to stop it. I don't want to quit it. Time seems to disappear when I'm engaged in it. My days go like this. I get Joe's reminding me all the time. Hey, man, I need this from you. I need this. I'm like, oh, geez. He's right. Because I'm at my desk diving into an article or reading something or coming up with new content. Happened to me today. Two days ago, it was six minutes till we went live and I wasn't in the studio yet and Joe's looking for me. Where was I at? I was in the hallway having a conversation with somebody. We're dreaming up something. Anybody that works with me will tell you this, and this is not a pat on the back. I'm explaining what it looks like and feels like. Anybody that works with me will tell you, if you run into the hall, if you run into Coleman in the hall, or you run into him in the parking lot, or you run him in the cafeteria, and you ask him anything about what's going on, you're in trouble. He's locked in. He's excited. He's fired up. I'll have a business meeting if I run into you in the bathroom. Hey, hey, uh, I, mean, I had a thought the other day. I mean, I'm all the time thinking about it, and I'm excited about it. I ran into Jim King, our VP of uh, Ramsey Ed, the other day. And I said to him, I said, hey, man, I think it's time. I think it's time for us to develop a curriculum. We started talking. He goes, you ready? I go, yeah. 
Start telling about the the book that I just wrote, and we got the manuscript turned in. That's coming out in November. We'll tell you more about it as we get closer. I got all these things going. We're working on an assessment. Oh, baby, I'm excited about that too. I start telling him all these pieces. He looks at me, Joe, and he goes, he's like, Coleman, every time I run into you, man, you start talking about this stuff, I get all fired up. I go, great, because I'm fired up. That's passion. It's not about the notoriety, although that's nice. We all love affirmation and recognition. It's not about the money, although mo money is great for everybody. We like the money. It's about the work. Whether anybody sees me doing it or I get paid for it, I love the engagement of the work. And every one of us has work like that that we feel that way towards. Some of you, it's building something with your hands. Some of you, it's fixing something. Some of you, it's designing something. Some of you, it's uh, creating something. Some of you, it's 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 a coding. Some of you, it's caregiving. Some of you, it's instructing. Some of you, it's leading. I could go on and on and on. When I talk about passion, that's what I mean. And so defining and understanding it, it is work that I love deeply because of the work itself. And the way you figure it out is to do the sweet spot exercise that we teach in our first stage of the seven stages of meaningful work. Get clear. What do I do best? Talent. Hard skills, soft skills. Folks, there are clues there. Nobody in the human race likes to do work that they suck at. That's called torture. We like to do things we're good at, so let's start with talent. There's some clues there. And then as I define passion today, now you can identify roles and tasks that give you that feeling. And that's how we figure it out. And then we can go forward and look at mission. What are the results I want to create in the marketplace? Some of you can get the passion that way by going, well, I want to do this. I want to help these people solve this problem with this solution. I want to provide it. I want to be part of the solution. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, well, what's the work that I love to do that produces that result? Get back into it however you want to. But understanding passion is the key to changing your life as it relates to the work you do. Meaningful work is in your sweet spot. But I want you to get passion. Really understand that because you've got to love the work. And when you get into a place where you are doing work that you love, that creates results that matter to you, you're working like no one else. And Monday morning isn't a slog. Monday morning isn't miserable. You're grateful. You're excited. You can't wait to get at it. You're not miserable talking about it. I'm telling you. Katie, bar the door if you ever show up at Ramsey Solutions and ask me what I'm dreaming and scheming about. Yeah, I'm going to load you up like a, like a blowtorch. Why? Not because I'm Mr. Enthusiastic. Not because I'm Mr. Positivity. I'm on fire. I love it. I'm using what I do best to do work I love to produce results that matter deeply to me. And it is you that matters deeply to me. You finding your sweet spot and filling it. My time's almost up, but before I let you go, you matter and you do have what it takes. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, this is the Ken Coleman Show. Press on. Press on.